Hey guys and welcome to part 6 of this shader writing tutorial on unitycookie.com This part we are going to take a look at cube map reflections Now instead of specularity Perhaps you want to actually have an object be reflective such as a window Plastic teapot um, Or plastic teapot with a window Whatever you want really In this case we're going to have a reflective robot so let's go ahead and take our Lambert shader. So this is just a few shader we wrote in lesson three. I've brought this over. And of course, first thing we need to do is rename this cube map reflection. Okay. And yeah, let's get started. We'll first get rid of that darkness value. We don't need that. That was just a good example that I used back in lesson three. Okay, so this is our standard Lambert shader. Now let's go ahead and add in a cube map. So to do this, if you remember from our tutorial on properties, we go, not main, we type in cube. And we're gonna call this one here cube map. And its type is cube, all in capitals. So that will tell it that it's looking for a cube map. A cube map is a specific type of uh, asset in Unity, which I will show you in a moment. Okay, so this one here, it's looking for a cube map, and yeah, we're going to give it one. Okay, so once we've got there, that there done, we can come in here, and of course, as it's an image, we need to sample it. So it's going to be sampler. Uh, sampler cube for this one and that tells it that we're going to be sampling a cube because a cube map is actually made up of six images so it's like top bottom front back left right and yeah so that's why we use the sampler cube one and so that we can use it in the shader what we want to do is we want to map the output color from this cube map to a reflection vector. So we want a world space reflection vector. So in our input, thankfully, Unity has gone ahead and created one of these for us. All we need to do is write float3 world refill, short for reflection. So world reflection. And this is a built in module. And all we need to do is, is specify we want it there and now we can come down after our albedo and write o dot emission equals text cube and this one here is going to be underscore cube because we want to use this one up here in dot world Riffle. So we're taking the world reflection vector, not the UVs. So we mapped it to the UVs, it would look kind of weird. I might actually come in and map it to the UVs to show you what it would look like, if it will even work. I have, I've never actually tried that, I'll be honest, but I'm always up for experimenting. So this is a cube map reflection. So let's take a look at how this is working. So if I jump into Unity, boom. All right, so it's already got a cube map on there. It's taken one from my directory. I already have a skyboxes imported. So to get these, what you want to do is go into Assets, Import Package, and Skyboxes. And once you have these skyboxes, all you need to do is create a, uh, you need you need to create a cube map from them because what it gives you is six images. So sunny, let's grab. Uh, what have we got? Grab one that looks cool. Don't know what I did with that one. Well, 
So yeah, let's let's do it with perhaps this overcast one. So all we need to do is go create cube map, and I'm gonna call this one here overcast one. And we simply drag and drop these ones in here. Now you can download a whole bunch of these. I literally have a big folder full of cube maps. I think I've got like 40 different cube maps I can use. And yeah, it's good to make a nice collection. So yeah, with that all in, all we need to do is grab our body and make sure we are on Unity Cookie Cube Map Reflection. I'm going to drag that Overcast 1 in there. I'm going to drag that into the head as well. And there we go. So if we zoom in here, you can see we're actually reflecting on top of our shader. And that is a cube map, which is awesome. But we have a bit of an issue. The cube map is not respecting our normals. So you can see we don't have any of that bump detail through here. So how do we go about doing that? Well first, I'm going to grab lesson 6, I'm going to duplicate this. Now it's going to name it lesson 7, I don't want to name it lesson 7, I want to name it 6B. And of course it's gotten rid of it in there now, so I'm going to open that up again. Okay, so we have a cube map here. So this is the same one as before. And if you if you aren't too sure, by the way, emission is uh, effectively just adding color to it. It's not necessarily emitting light. It just sort of uh, makes it look like it's reflective. So I just thought I'd clarify that one up in case I haven't done that already. So to get the normal map, we need to use a function called internal data. Now this is a interesting little thing that contains a whole bunch of really cool stuff and yeah we want to grab this one here so that we can use the world reflection vector which is slightly more advanced than the world refl. Okay so let's get into it. Okay so the first thing we want to do is we want to jump in here where it's got world refl, go down one and go internal underscore data all in caps and we don't need a semicolon after it and yeah internal data that is what we want and that will take this world refl that we specified above it into here and it's going to create a world reflection vector now we don't need to know how it actually does all of that you can look it up if you want but yeah instead of in world refl what I want to do is I want to go and write in here world reflection vector and this one here takes two parameters it takes in so it takes all of the in so all of these we don't have to specify individual ones and then it takes a normal which we know is going to be o dot normal Okay, so we actually need to come back in and create our normals. So let's first come up here and we're going to go and write in bump text. And of course, we're going to go normal map 2D equals bump. So now we have our normal method up there. We need to come down here and we need to go sampler 2D bump text. And we need to come down here and of course write out our normal. So o.normal equals, now if you remember from the normal map one, we're going to use unpack normal and this one here we're going to use the text2d function 
Now you can just copy and paste from the last ones, but I would highly recommend that you uh, just type it out each time manually because it's really good practice. So bump text and in dot uv main text and in with a semicolon. So we're going to grab those normals, grab our bump text and sign them to our main UVs. And come in here and we're going to use the world reflection vector, which is going to recalculate that world refl using our normals effectively. It's not exactly how it works, but um, it's how it appears to work, so that's how you guys should probably understand it. And that is it. So let's give that a go. So I'm just going to save this, jump back into Unity, make sure we don't get any errors. No, no errors. So let's come in here and just go make sure we are using cube map reflection. Actually, I'm going to get an error here because I need to go rename this to bumped cube map reflection. And that way it won't um, cause issues with the other one. So we're going to come down, Unity Cookie, Bumped Cube Map Reflection. It's already brought in that normal map. So let's do that for the head as well. Unity Cookie, Bumped Cube Map Reflection. And there we go. You can see we have that normal map detail. And it's respecting our normals with our reflection. And you can come in here and you can put on whatever one you want, say if I wanted the airy cube map, like so, and of course this one here is, hasn't actually got our head normals on it, so I'm going to drag that on, there we go, it's looking much better. And this one here, we'll grab our airy cube map on this one, and that just changes our visual style. And there we go. So I hope that's not too confusing. All this internal data, world reflection vectors, they can get a bit too much. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit to get used to. But it's, yeah, it's really cool. So just going through this one more time to make sure that we all understand things. So I've got this one here. I'll just go over this uh, second one, which uses our normals. So first off, we need to add in our cube map. And this uses a special type called cube. And we don't need to give it a starting value. It just knows it's, it's going to get a cube map. OK, so coming down here, we have this float3 world refl input. And this one here is a pre-built function which just gets the world reflection. And of course it's a float 3. So it's a vector. Okay, next one is we have internal data. Now internal data contains some really cool stuff. One in particular that we're after is world reflection vector. This one down here. Okay, so coming down a bit further, we have sampler cube. So we want to sample, sample a cube, not a 2D image, it's a cube, because it has six 2D images in it. A little bit further, we have this really long line of text here. So you want to use text cube, which is the cube map equivalent of the text 2D. World reflection vector. Now the world reflection vector is going to take two values and it gets our it gets, it gets the reflection vector based on the normals of our normal map rather than the normals of our actual geometry. So we take that in value, which will grab everything in the input. Because we have specified up here, input in. And we want the o.normal. So it's going to take these normals that we wrote above it. Make sure you have them above your emission, otherwise this won't work. And... Yeah, it'll take those normals, make sure it's calculated all right, and they'll output it. And that works perfectly fine. So I hope that thing isn't too tricky. It gets a little bit uh, finicky in the end. 
So what we're going to move on to next is we're going to look at room lighting. 